Hi, my name is Sandro Esposito with Signalfire. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect a level sensor with the Ranger. In this case, I'll be using an ultrasonic level sensor by Pulsar and the kit that comes with it, which includes a reducer and a cable gland. And we also have a bracket that will adapt to a variety of situations. Uh, first, the bracket can be angled to ensure that you square with the level that you're measuring. And there's a multitude of holes behind it to adapt to U-bolts uh, or to a wall or structure of your choice. Part one, let's couple the reducer with the cable gland. And for the purpose of this exercise and this video, I will not be using Teflon tape on those threads, but highly recommend to do it. So you secure the, the coupler with the cable gland. The next part is I'll be routing the cable through the reducer and the cable gliding assembly, pull it through, and then tighten up the level sensor with the cable reducer. For the Ranger part, I like to remove the circuit board and the battery makes it easier to route the cable through the housing of the Ranger. So I'm going to remove the battery and the circuit board. Now I'm going to route the base of the Ranger and secure it to the cable gland assembly. And finally, let's reassemble the tower, put everything on top of it. So let's put the battery, then let's put the electronic module. We will secure the circuit board to the Ranger. And lastly, land those two wires, the positive and negative, to the heart plus and minus terminals that you'll find on the daughter card. We call those daughter cards the, the multitude of expansion cards uh, that we offer. Uh, you can have heart, Modbus, SDI 12. In this case, I'm using a heart interface card that will interface with the heart values and measurements coming from this Pulsar sensor. So once you land those two wires, we can then move on and then configure how the Ranger to power and measure the Pulsar sensor. So let's move on to the web app right now and to fully configure it. To log into the web app, click on the Signal Fire Cloud login. Then simply enter your credentials of your Signal Fire Cloud account. Type in your username and then input your password. Once logged in, you'll see your Ranger on your homepage. So let's proceed to configure your Ranger to work with the Pulsar unit. Click on your node. The first part will be to set up the node to interface with this transmitter. The first part is to give your node a name, something useful and meaningful. In this case, I'm gonna type in like tank level one. Then set up the right voltage for the transmitter. So look at the specification of your transmitter for the voltage and the duration that is required to activate and power your transmitter. Finally, how often you want to measure the sensor to the cloud. Hit apply. Once the device returns green or the web app returns green, that means the changes have been sent to the Ranger. You'll notice the Ranger will reboot and go offline for a couple seconds. Now let's interface the Ranger with the heart device. Click on the configure node on the heart tile and then activate the heart ID associated with your heart instrument. Hit apply. Again, when the change has been accepted, it turns to green. The tile now shows that you have one heart device being pulled by the Ranger. Let's move on now to configure those heart variables that you would like to monitor and put as tiles on your screen. A heart device has four variables. So let's force the reading. Click force report and then wait for the duration that you set before, which is about 10 seconds for the sensor to turn on, power, 
and then make the measurement. When the measurements have been done, you'll notice that the cloud will refresh and the values will now turn to green. This means that we have successfully powered the sensor and made the measurement from that heart device. You can elect to have each of these vari variables set as tiles by clicking the enable tile function. And also put a useful name to that heart variables. Like in this case, I'll put silo one. Hit apply. You can also set alarms if you want to have a text message, an email, or the web app to indicate an alarm by activating the alarm and setting a threshold for it. If you would like to change the widget, you simply click configure on that tile and there's multiple widgets you can choose for the display. For this level, I'll choose a tank indicator. I'm also going to change the range for that input to match my, uh, the measurement that I'm making. Hit apply and you'll notice that now the interface has changed to a tank level, which is more meaningful and useful for this application. Because it's a heart instrument, there's more than one values that we can measure and trend. And so I'm going to now choose the other tab, and which is measuring temperature and select the dial indicator as a display. I'll modify you know, the upper range to be meaningful for this application. And again, if you would like to have alarms uh, and change the name of this tile, click on modify for that hard variable. I'm gonna use like here, like silo temperature. I think that's more meaningful. Hit the apply wait for the change to take place when it turns green. And then again here, I'd like to have an alarm when the temperature is less than 10 degrees or more than 25 degrees. This will also affect how the display is shown on the dial indicator. So that way you can see the needle being in the green zone or there's the yellow zone, which will be the alarm zone when that you just set. So this is how you configure uh, the web app to work with uh, the Ranger and interface properly. So as you can see, connecting a level transmitter, in this case from Pulsar, to the Ranger was accomplished within a couple minutes from like installing it, configuring it, and successfully monitoring all the variables using the web app. Thank you very much and keep following our other videos on other topics.